This is Richard Campbell from .NET Rocks. I'm here with my friend Yuval Lowy. Hello, Yuval. Richard. Good to see you again. Good to be here. So it was six months ago, almost Las Vegas, day. almost to the day where we had the conversation about EnergyNet, and I think you and I have been talking steadily ever since. That's right. Uh, what's ha so we maybe we should paint some broad pictures for folks who aren't up to speed on your on your vision and then talk about what's happened in the past six months. So what we discussed six months ago is my uh, realization that the next big boom in software is gonna be something I call the energy net. It's a term I call which signifies the fact it's kinda of like the next internet. Oh yeah. It's um, an incredibly complicated, redundant uh, software system that's gonna run the energy markets. A keen in size and topology to the internet itself, equivalent in the amount of effort and the money that has to go into it. Now, when we're now at ground zero. There's nothing yet. Right. Um, the smart money is aligning itself. About a third of all VC money in the Silicon Valley now goes into that. Right. Um, but aren't they really focused on the alternative energy side of this rather uh, than the grid side? No, there's m a lot of money going into uh, the smart grid itself. The so smart grid is viably economically even if there's no alternative energy at all. Which I love. I think that's fascinating. And, and to really set this picture here, this is the scope of the internet because every house, any place that consumes power then is a node right. on this energy. Every network. house, every building, every office building, every car eventually, all of that will be part of this massive system, which probably take you know a decade or two to evolve. Right. Just like the internet started with TCP, IP, and Berkeley sockets in the 70s and eventually matured into eBay, right? I mean, right. Uh, but in between spent time in all of the universities and all of that sort of exactly. thing. Exactly. And so, I definitely see the money uh, uh, focusing on that, and certainly we can see it in even in the stimulus bill there was this uh, $74 billion of the even direct money infusion and tax incentive and regulation to make it uh, happen. Um, I think the government actually understands now that you can't just wave a magic wand and expect a shift to alternative energy because the grid can't sustain it. Right. That's why you see a dumb down of the rhetoric of, oh, we're gonna do solar and everything to, okay, let's just get the grid first. Get the grid working. And that's just purely a software problem. And like you said, the grid ought to be creating benefit onto itself. So talk to me about some of the use case scenarios. What is the grid, what is a smart grid going to do for the average consumer that's gonna the, make such a difference? The holy grail is to level the peak base problem. What is right. that? Energy is consumed on an uneven base throughout the day. More during the day, less at it night. Actually, the peak is around 5 p.m. Everybody come back from home, turn on the lights, turn on the oven, the kids take shower. Right. Boom, energy spike, right? And then when everybody goes to bed, it drastically goes down further, and then ramping up through the day through offices and commercial sites. Right. And peak to throw, we're talking about 50% uh, or 100%, depending how you count. Right? Wow. Because from a 50 to 100, it's a 100% increase, right? Mm -hmm. And so to, to be able to support that, the utility companies presently maintain enormous degree of reserves. You cannot just take a nuclear power station and turn it on and off every few hours. It takes right. three days to ramp up. Um, and so they have enormous capacity. In fact, 40% of the energy consumed in the US is actually, uh, I wouldn't say uh, wasted because it is reserved, but right. it's not put to use, shall we say that. Well, then there's no real way to store massive amounts of power. Uh, not in using today's infrastructure. Right. No. I mean, you could move to hydrogen economy and start uh, breaking using electroanalysis, uh, hydrogen, Right, and it's the guys who pump water up hills. I mean, that's a yeah, whole other thing. Yeah, but, but we don't have that uh, technological infrastructure. Right. Yet. So right now, a lot of money is going to waste. If you could level it, basically, there would be much less of a peak and much more of a base, then you wouldn't have to spend so much on reserves. You wouldn't have to spend so much in uh, maintaining even the plants. Mm -hmm. Uh, in fact, there isn't today any plan whatsoever to upgrade the power uh, grid in the U.S. It's already uh, decrepit. Right. It's assumed that 60% uh, of the U.S. grid, as far as, as substations and plants and so on, is at end of life, and 25% is beyond end of life. Right. It will take at least at $1.3 trillion to just bring it up to what we need today. And that's not accounting for future demographic growth. Right. And so all that money that we have to actually be put into uh, adding more plants is not there. Mm -hmm. Now, if you could actually level the uh, curve and make it constant, then you wouldn't have to actually spend the time on, on money on new plants, and you could actually have uh, less in reserve. And the only way to actually do it is to do it using software. And so imagine that... Um, 
every house has, shall we say, a smart meter. Right mm -hmm. now the meters are dumb. Yeah. You just report at the end of the month how many kilowatts you consumed. But imagine there's the first stepping stone is a meter that at least has two clocks in it and two meters, and it records when you consumed peak power, you consume uh, base power, right? Because they're priced differently. Sure. And then you get basically one statement that consolidates these two numbers. So now, now you created an incentive. Now to you the create consumer. an implicit incentive because now the consumer knows if I'm going to turn on the dishwasher after the kids go to bed, I'm going to save a few bucks. Right. Right. But it's it's passive, right? You have yeah. to kind of like modify the way you consume things, which people necessarily don't like to do. Mm -hmm. The next phase is to send price information dynamically to the meter right. over some kind of a network. And the meter would then have some kind of uh, um, little operating system or it can actually now move the whole house into a home operating system. And you could say, look, if the price for power is so much, um, you run the AC, you run the dishwasher, whatever. If it's so expensive like this, don't. Wait for the night and then schedule it. You can kind right. of like build your activation plan for these things. So the idea that I, I can load my dishwasher at dinner time, at after dinner, and say, make sure these dishes are clean by morning. That's right. And it runs when power is cheapest. Right, and you can also do it predictively because we know at midnight it's cheapest, or when it waits for the signal for the actual price trigger. actually trigger. sees the power actually sees that, right? Right. Uh, well, much, I like this much idea. The same, much the same way, if there's, an ev if there's a spike in demand, the grid will actually collapse. Right. So we'll actually send, look, I'm going to raise now the price of power from 10 cents a kilowatt to $80 a kilowatt. Do you really want to run the dishwasher now? Just to make it stop. Just well, to make it stop. Well, in California, isn't it? Because you guys had the problems with rolling blackouts. Yes. And they, they started doing calls where they said, like, turn down your power or everybody's... Then they announce it. it on the radio now. There's a flex alert. Everybody turn off the AC now or, right. or bring it up. And Californians have learned the hard way to comply. To comply with that. Because that's but it would be so much no better problem. if it was automated. And if it was automated, it doesn't actually require any changes in behavior. Right. And so by doing so, you actually create negative energy. The nickname for it is megawatts. Megawatts. Yeah. Negative watts. Yeah. And... Models show that uh, it has 10x ROI. So for every dollar you spend doing it, you get $10 back. Mm -hmm. And so just doing that would improve things significantly as far as uh, how much energy is consumed, eventually ending up with lower uh, utility bills for the consumer. Now, on top of that, you can actually have guys like us, the geeks that have you know a, a little uh, application that actually can see how much energy is consumed by which temperature of the house is a function of the time of the year and really do some sophisticated things. Sure. That's going to be an extreme end of the spectrum. It's like how many people actually have today a home uh, media center? Not many, no. but those that have it, you know, can operate it. I do. You but do. I, well, I mean, there's a serious uh, wife acceptance factor yes. over there, yes. 